God bless you guys. Welcome back to this first night of our series of Shadow. I'm excited about you being here. We have a lot to cover tonight, so I just want to jump right into the lesson. Uh, if you study out the Gospels, the underlying current, the thread, is this. Jesus simply said, follow me. Or in other words, shadow me. Stay close to me. Just follow me and you'll get this figured out. You know, I, I grew up in church, and at times as a young person, maybe I didn't understand it all. I felt like kind of at church, it was kind of like Jesus says, this Jesus says that, and without an understanding, and of course, in a youth group and going to church when you didn't feel like it sometimes as a child or a young person, I felt like Jesus just said, you come to church. It's kind of like playing the old game. You remember the old game Simon says as a kid? Simon says, touch your knees. So you touch your knees. Simon says, touch your ears. Simon says, sit down, stand up. And if you stood up without it preceding Simon says, then you were out. And it was that Simon says that would cause you to do everything. And sometimes if you're not careful, you can live for God where you just feel like it's Jesus says, do that. Jesus says, don't read that. Jesus says, come here. And Jesus says, go there. What I want to try to help us in this series, on this shadow series this semester, is that it's not all about Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says. I want you to get in the game and do what Jesus says, but I don't want you to feel like Jesus is always complaining and harping because Jesus is a loving, kind person, a spirit. You see, people play the Jesus game all the time, and they live for God like that. And I guess you could, but I don't recommend it. I think we need to live above the Jesus says. We need to live with a relationship of God that we do things out of love. We do things out of commitment. Not because I've got a list of rules and regulations, policies and protocols, things I can do and things I cannot do. And that, That's living under a lot of pressure and that's stressful. I don't think living for God is stressful. I don't think living for God is a bunch of do's and don'ts. When you fall in love with Him and you have a relationship with Him. You see, if they take the Gospels, the account of Jesus' life, all you see is a relational situation. Jesus uses relations, scenarios to explain Himself. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, I mean, He talks about the father and the child. He talks about the vine and the branch talks about the sheep and the shepherd. He, he uses these uh, analogies. And if you approach him, you can approach him with the relationships. And maybe perhaps you've lived for God long enough or not very long, and you've missed something. I think in this series, God is inviting you to have an extraordinary relationship with him. Not do's and don'ts, not guidelines, not things that you have to be stressed about. But throughout the Gospels, the word of Jesus came back to this. The word was, we're going to build a relationship with God. And that's really what I want to build this series on. The word is follow or shadow. I want you to shadow God. I want you to shadow what the church does. I want you to support and be close enough to where it doesn't feel like an obligation. Oh, we have church tonight. We have church today. Oh, the church is doing outreach on Saturday. Oh, I got to be there. The youth are doing this. I got to help drive the van. No, we're going to shadow what God is doing and it becomes something enjoyable. And Jesus in the Gospels extended an invitation to follow him with every single person imaginable. Rich people was invited. Poor people. Spiritual people. People that weren't so spiritual. You see, throughout the Gospels, it was, hey, shadow me, follow me. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 reads like this. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me and you'll be my disciple, Jesus said unto him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, the Bible says in verse 11, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? You see, back in that day, tax collectors were unwelcome people. 
The New Living Translation version calls them the scum. But look, look, Jesus told Matthew to follow me. And the scripture says, so Matthew got up and followed him. You identify yourself with me, he's saying, and I'll identify myself with you. Follow me, shadow me, imitate me, do what I do. You see, remember, Jesus didn't say, if you're willing to, and you fill in the blank, you can follow me. If you come from this neighborhood, you can follow me. If you have a good job and you have something to offer the church, you can follow me. No, no, that wasn't it. He just simply said, shadow me, follow me. If you're willing to stop what you're doing, you can follow me. If you're willing to start, you can follow me. Here's the takeaway here. He simply says to Matthew these two words, follow me, shadow me. And so my goal in this sermon series is to bring our church to a level that we're just following him, we're shadowing him, and things don't become a drudgery, a chore, a hassle. I don't want to raise up a church where people feel it's a hassle to live for God. If that's how you felt in the past and people have told you, I don't want to go to church, you can't do nothing, you know, then they haven't fallen in love with God and they're not following him, they're not shadowing him. So Jesus extended this invitation throughout all the Gospels. We're going to take over the next couple of months and we're going to tune out all the imagery of church and we're going to tune out all the religion. And I want us to simply follow him. We're going to skip past whatever you know, whatever you don't know. And I want us to ask ourselves one question. Here's the question. Am I following? Am I shadowing Jesus? Because when you enjoy being around someone you love, it's not hard. You know, people that are dating, they enjoy being around each other. I never hear a couple that's engaged that we're doing premarital counseling. Yeah, I don't like being engaged because uh, he wants me just to talk to him alone. I don't like being engaged because he always wants to go out just him and I. No, that's part of the love. That's part of the relationship, of course, and vice versa. When you love someone, you want to be around them. And what others may look like as a sacrifice, oh, they had to give up this. They can't play the field anymore. I don't want to. I love this person. What if we looked at Jesus the same way? And we took all the stuff that Jesus said and we set it aside for a few weeks and asked ourselves the question, am I shadowing Jesus? This is one thing I know, that we've been called to shadow. We've been called to follow. You see, Jesus drew a circle, a very big circle, invited as many people to step in and shadow him. I want us to shadow Jesus. So as we launch this series, the question around your house will be, I hope is, am I following? Am I following God? Am I shadowing God? And, and, and again, see, what I'm trying to help us learn, I'm trying to teach us, I'm trying to mentor us, I'm trying to train us, that living for God as an apostolic Christian, as a Pentecostal, doesn't take a lot of effort when I'm following God, when I'm shadowing Him. And that's, I think, why David said in Psalms 122 and 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let me go follow Jesus. You see, it's my goal through this series that when Wednesday Connect Group rolls around and Sunday service rolls around, that you guys get excited because we're going to come together. We're drawing one big circle at the house of God in Temecula, and we're coming there to worship and to high five people and to believe that God is going to do something in our midst. So shadow God, get close to God, lean into his whisper. Lean into his bosom where you can hear and feel his heartbeat. If you can get your walk to God there and then you can maintain that, I'm telling you, listen to me, my friend, listen. Living for God will be effortless. Living for God will not be challenging. Whatever is going on at the church, whatever event we're having, whatever is on the church calendar, whatever the invitation goes out, the emails, you will be excited 
when they show up because why I'm following Jesus I'm shadowing Jesus I get a chance to hang around God's people and it blesses my soul and it's something I'm look forward to hey I've had a great time teaching this tonight I want you to just kind of think about it learn how you can get your family into the circle and have your kids and your household shadow Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for a great first night, a launch, God. I pray as they go home, they think about the word shadow. They think about follow, imitate. I pray, God, that you would begin to give them a spiritual awareness of where they are in their relationship with you. Are they close enough to where they could see your shadow and their shadow? God, there must be two shadows as we walk with you. I've got to be close enough, God. I'm going to shadow you. I pray that you'd use these teachings, God, to help us do just that. Bless our church. Bless every Connect group. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I'm going to be preaching. Let's have some crazy service, a church worship of God, and see what God won't do. Amen.